And then by way of schedule, I will be at the church next Sunday at 11 o'clock. <laughs> okay, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, uh, verse 9. For we are laborers together with God, ye are God's husbandry, ye are God's building. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, another buildeth thereon, but I let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, so yet so as by fire. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? And I ask that as a question. So what is it being described here is in fact the um, the judgment seat of Christ. Let's open with a word of prayer here. Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you for your love and for your grace. Uh, we do thank you that as we look at this issue about the judgment seat of Christ, uh, that one of the takeaways we would all understand is that it's not a day of condemnation. It's a day where we receive praise of God. Uh, all the bad stuff uh, gets burnt up and it was it's just the judgment seat of Christ has to do with what was done in our body, what was done in the Lord, uh, which can never be in vain. Uh, and the verse tells us that men will receive praise of God. Uh, we do thank you for that, that wonderfulness. Uh, we do thank you that it's not based on us, but on Christ in us. Uh, and we just thank you for your love and your grace in your son's name. Amen. Okay, so this set of verses is about the judgment seat of Christ. Now, one thing we need to think about, with the, remember with the judgment seat of Christ, the context of it, near as I can tell, and everything, is really has to do with your ministry. Okay. Now, I don't mean sitting behind a pulpit or anything like that, but just your life. Your life. Yeah, your life. Your life is your ministry. We sometimes don't think about about it that way, uh, but but that's where it is. You know, uh, you're always an example. If we, you know, up at the hospital, we have an opportunity to, and you know, we're in a Catholic hospital, so that's an interesting deal to begin with. But but it's it's it's, and we're going to see here. The issue is, how did the doctrine get built up in you? Did the doctrine get built up in you? Um, so let's just look at a couple of the verses talking about the judgment seat of Christ, and then we can, we'll can we get into it. Look over at Romans 14. It's going to be in Romans 14 and 2 Corinthians 5. Romans 14, and I'm in Romans 15, so that's wrong. That's, anyway, that, that's not the verse I want, <laughs> but I know it is. Romans 14, verse 10. Uh, let's just jump into verse 7. Verse 7, For none of us liveth to himself, and no man dieth to himself. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord. Whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live, therefore, or die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ both died and rose and revived, that he might be Lord both of the dead and living. Why dost thou judge thy brother? Or why dost thou set it not thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For as it is written, for it is written, as I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. So these verses, this, I, I really went here just so, just so we see that there is something called the judgment seat of Christ that Paul identifies. And it's, it is for believers only. Okay, uh, The unsaved go to the great white throne judgment, and that's for the unsaved only. But uh, just a few things to see here. You see in verse 11, as it is written, I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. Okay, well, the context there, of course, is the people that go to the judgment seat of Christ in, in our context here. But this is not the thing over in Philippians where everybody's going to bow the knee and say, Christ is Lord. This way, you're going to give account. You're going to show up for the judgment seat of Christ, and you're going to give an account for yourself. Okay, now, again, I said it in the prayer, don't get too worried for it's fearful. I mean, there's, there's a teaching, and it's even in great circles, that people are going to get to the judgment seat of Christ, and they're going to be embarrassed, and they're going to be ashamed, and they're going to be condemned. And, in Christ. Yeah, that, that's, that, that's not the way it's going to be, so... But you are going to give account to yourself, and we'll, we'll see that. So that's the confession. 
the confession in, in this in this verse here, the confession is verse twelve, giving an account of yourself to God. Okay, there, I'm not denying Philippians two. I mean, there is coming a day when everybody's going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Now, the people in we sometimes think the people in hell are going to do that. They're going to finally see the error of their ways. And no, they're going to do it full of venom and bitter and, and anger. You know, you know, they're not going to be happy about the situation. Okay, look over at First Corinthians or Second Corinthians five. Uh, verse 9. It says, Wherefore we labor, or we looked at this issue being about labor with God. Wherefore we labor, this is again, in context here is, is, is your ministry, or putting on display the life of Christ. That whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. The issue is that your labor is going to be accepted, right? We're already told clearly in Ephesians, we're accepted in the beloved. Right? That's a Keep your hand here. Look over to Ephesians 1. Ephesians 1 and verse 6. He says, To the praise of the glory of His grace, wherein He hath made us accepted in the Beloved. You are accepted in the beloved. When God looks down and sees you, he sees you in his son, and therefore you are accepted because he is, accepts his son because his son, he's what? He's well pleased. Okay? So when we're over here in, in 2 Corinthians, the issue is not our standing before God, but our state here in time. Okay? So we want that labor to be accepted of him. Verse 10, how do I know that? Because verse 10, to, back in 2 Corinthians now, verse 10 tells me, for, okay, in light of number nine, we must, that we may accept him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done. Does it say in his body or by his body? In. in his body, according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. I, I find it interesting here, and I haven't quite figured this all the way out, but this is a phrase, this is not a time where it says good or evil. So often you see good or evil. This seems to, this is good or bad. Uh, why why the word's different? Somebody wants a research well, project, they can do that. And... I think about it just being fruitful. If you're if you're producing uh, the fruit of the spirit, capital S, then it will be good. If you're doing your ministry selfishly for your own acclaim, mm -hmm. even though it could be good, but it's not of the Lord, then it's bad. Yeah, it, it very well may be that. Yeah, I, and I think I think I think you're. I, I think you're there. I, it's just interesting to me because when the most of the time, that's not always true, but almost all, all the time when the Bible uses the word evil, it doesn't mean really bad. It just means not good. Okay, but it also uses the word bad. I mean, clearly, here, clear, right? In 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 the garden, it was the, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, right? Um, so again, I, I don't want to get real sidetracked on that. But if somebody wants a research project, look into that and let me know. <laughs> okay, um, but you know. First thing, we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. That's where we're going to be. And we are going to receive the things that were done in our body. You're going to, you, we're, we're going to nail and we're going to, con, we're going to confess to God. If I can put it this way, the doctrinal level, the doctrinal understanding that we have in us. We're, we're, and, and how did that work out in our life? Right? Did we get the doctrine in us? Did we study? Did we get the doctrine? Did we know the doctrine? Did we understand the doctrine? And then did we apply the doctrine? So what are we talking about? Knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. Yeah. Knowledge, you gotta know it. Right. Okay. Understanding, you have to think it through. You have to understand what you're being told. What, however you're being told, that you need to understand it. And then the wisdom, to go out and apply it. Right. That's the application. Right. Uh, you know what do they say? And, and this is just. Oh, I forget the first part. But but wisdom is knowing that a tomato does not belong in a fruit salad. Right, you know, that they, just just the wisdom of how to apply what you what you've learned, right. and and you know, you guys know, have been around me long enough. No, I really have a hobby horse about what's going online. Is that people maybe have the knowledge, but that's kind of where it's standing. That's uh, maybe even some a little bit of understanding, but the wisdom, the application there about in the world, is, and they'd probably say the same thing about me, but. Well, they don't, they don't it, it, 
it's not getting out there. They're, 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 they're not putting the life of Christ on display. It's, okay, here's the 15 tenets of right division, or what, I just made that number up. Here's the 15 tenets you have to apply to all. Instead of being a five-point Calvinist, they're a 15-point, 20-point uh, right divisionist, right? I mean, yeah. those are my phrases. I mean, uh, but, but, you know, it, you, if people were to go back and, and look at the people that we stand on, they would see the struggles and the frustrations and, and the confusion that those people had. And, and, and a lot of times people today want to look back and say, well, he was, I just can't believe that person believed that. Well, look at all the other stuff that, 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 that right, that, that they worked out. So people are where they are. Um, but the, 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 because most of the people that we stand on the shoulders of, if they were here today, some of those people would say, well, I can fellowship that person because he didn't bring all the things I do. Never mind the fact that, I mean, take Martin Luther. Martin Luther, if he was here today, he'd probably disagree with everything we say. Mm -hmm. But we stand on his understanding, leaving the Catholic Church, of grace by faith. Okay, so anyhow. The issue is what's done in your body. Okay, according to what he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Okay, when you studied, when you came to see the doctrine, did it work out in you good or bad? Was it good doctrine or bad doctrine? Okay, come with me over to 2 Timothy 2. 2 Timothy 2 and then 2 Timothy 3. Second Timothy two, and I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about this verse in, in a way. Oftentimes we don't talk about this verse. Second Timothy two fifteen. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay, so we we almost every time we go to this verse, right, we talk about the rightly dividing the word of truth. Clearly, that's how I look at the scriptures. Okay, but sometimes we just go by past those first two two parts of the verse real quick. Study to show thyself approved unto God. Okay, well, you're already approved. You're already accepted of God. Study to, to show that, the, the, that you think about things the way God thinks about things, that, they, that, that your state matches your standing, right? If, if you're already approved of God because of the things that are going on, study in such a manner that that's reflected in you, okay? And the next part of that verse, a workman, okay, it's work. It's where we all know, everybody in this room knows what it takes to be a workman. Okay? It, take, it, takes, it takes work. Mm -hmm. you, you don't just sit there and, and, and hug your Bible and say, man, I love little Jesus and let me go, go watch the, 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 the calling, the Jesus TV show, whatever that thing is right now, and, and just zap me, God. I'm ready. It doesn't work that way. It's work. And yeah, it, it's work and it's study. And I don't mean it in, in necessarily a bad way. But, and then why do you do it? You are a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. You, you don't need to be ashamed because you got the doctrine in you. The doctrine it got in you and you got built up and it got out of you. And then it started to make a difference in your life and in the lives of those around you. And, and, and you, you didn't get mad at people when they didn't understand and believe the way you did immediately. Now you, you continued to share with them. You showed grace to them. And, and it, it worked out in you the way it should have. And then think about some of the things that Paul says. If a man's a heretic after the second time, just be done with him. I par that's a paraphrase. Right, Paul. Paul is not the guy that went and he battled everybody all of the time. Right, he didn't get together for Thanksgiving and battle with Aunt Betty every single Thanksgiving, and he didn't have Thanksgiving. But you guys get my point. Yeah, yeah. You know, we got these we got these holidays coming up. Right, we all know who we're going to have to talk to. We can be. You, this is an easy time to be prepared because you know who you're going to talk to, and you're going to know what the arguments are. And if you don't think they're getting ready for the battle, you're a fool. Grace is more powerful than the law. Right. So yeah. Right. And, 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 and be prepared. Yeah. And again, this is the time of year where, for the most part, you're going to know what the argument is because you've probably heard them before. Probably heard them every year. <laughs> exactly. Okay. So, again, that, that, that issue of being accepted and not being ashamed, and this is where people get the thing I said earlier. It's not like you're going to get up there and God's going to say, you know, you took Sunday nights and you watched football and you should have been studying. Shame on you. It doesn't work that way. Nope. He wants you. He doesn't want you to be 
ashamed, you shouldn't, you, there's no reason to be ashamed. If you're doing the work, and you are where you are. And Paul understands that. The Holy Spirit understands that. That's why he says in Philippians, for me to write these things again to you is not grievous. Didn't make Paul sad. But for you it's safe. It's repetition. In Thessalonians, he says, I've told you this before. And he took the time to write on the letter. Okay? That's the way you do it. That's the way the teaching happens. We, we, all, we, we, know, we all know how teaching happens. You know, we talk about music all the time. What's the thing in music? It's a catchy tune that gets repeated over and over and over and over and over. Right? You paid two chords. And those of us of a certain age, we knew exactly what song that was. And none of us should have known what song that was, by the way. That is not a good song. But we all knew what it was, right? We all knew what it was. <laughs> we all ought to be ashamed. <laughs> but that's how it works, right? We've heard it enough. Right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly. Look over at, so you're in 2 Timothy. Look over at 2 Timothy 3. 2 uh, Timothy 3. three. three. He says, in verse 15, All scripture is given by inspiration of God. 3.16 All scripture is given by inspiration of God is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. So all scripture is, 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 is given by the inspiration of God and it literally means God breathed. Okay? And it's profitable. You can get some profit out of it. It is good for you. Okay? For doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and although I'm not going to draw my little building, but doctrine, and then reproof, and then correction, that is what makes up instruction in righteousness, right? Okay, Romans, Galatians, Corinthians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, or Second Thessalonians, right? Those are all instructions in righteousness. Why? That the man of God may be perfect, that is mature, that is, truly furnished unto all good works. What's happening there? Something's going on in your inner man. Right? You're getting that doctrine in your inner man, whether it be good or bad, and then you can live out of that, having that doctrine in you. That first part of the verse where it says, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine. Our doctrine today is found in Romans through Philemon. That's where, if you want to find out what's going on with the church body of Christ, and what's too and specifically about you today. It's found in Romans through Philemon. Is there doctrine for us today that can be found in Genesis 1, one through, chapters 1 through 4? Yes. Absolutely. How many times have we gone back and looked at, yea, hath God said? I mean, that's where that doctrine, that the whole doctrine about do we have the word of God and should we use a King James Bible and did God really say this is all back there. And I think I've told you that i got to go back and find it. I was reading something in the Chronicles, the list of names in the Chronicles. And I compared it, I'm like, hey, there's a little bit of doctrine there. And I, okay, But we don't go there specifically to tell us what's going on with two and about us. But there's all kinds of things about there. You want to learn about creation? Go read the book of Job. Amongst others, there are other things. That's not what Job's about, but that's what's about there. Uh, you know, if, if you want to find out about, about the love of God, Romans 5 certainly would do it, but but just just you just can't miss it. Go read all of John's books. Maybe not Revelation, but John, first and second and third John. You can't you can't miss it. I mean, whoa. So there is doctrine everywhere, but the two is specifically about us is it, it, it's found in Romans through Philemon, and we want to be we want to be be clear on that. Okay. We talked about the gold, silver, and precious stones last time, didn't we? We went into Proverbs. Okay, excellent. That, that's very good. Come with me then to Colossians um, 1, verse 9. Colossians? Yeah. 1, 9? Uh-huh. He says, For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you, to desire that it might be filled with the knowledge of his will, in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you might walk worthy of the Lord and all pleasing, 
being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might, according to his glorious power, and all patience and long suffering with joyfulness. Look at verse 10. Now think about what we talked about, the judgment seat of Christ. If a person walks worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, is fruitful in every good work, and is increasing in the knowledge of, of, of God, is it probably a pretty reasonable assumption to, real, to think at the judgment seat of Christ, that's going to be a rewarded issue, mm -hmm. right? But how do you get there? How, how, do you, how are you able to do verse 10? You've got to be filled with the knowledge and the wisdom and the understanding. Of his will. Okay, now, and it's very clear here. What is it? It's the knowledge of his will. Right. It's a spiritual understanding. Okay, so again, when we get to that, just great. We need. We want, I want to focus on it's. It's a doctrinal issue. Now, you guys don't know probably about this because I think most of you came to the grace message after this happened, and then I bring it up. You might go Google it, and then you say, "Oh my goodness!" But there's a there's a, a teaching out there, and it, it's kind of gone away now. But it was a big deal about ten years ago called sonship edification, and my characterization of that, and they would probably dispute this a little bit, is that they taught to, and it was grace people that did it people that we labored with. They, it, it, they think essentially there, there's two levels of believers. Everybody that's saved gets to go to heaven. But only certain people get to rule and reign with Christ. And they are the people that understand the word of God rightly divided. Now, they had, and they would understand all of it. They understand it was Acts 9, not Acts 13. They had to understand Paul was their apostle. They had to understand it was King James Bible in the English language. They had to understand all these things and even if they knew it, but they didn't know they knew it. So now we're talking people in the 13, 14, 1500s, right? They knew this doctrine, but they didn't describe it the way these, this group of people described it. Then they wouldn't receive reward either. Okay? So if anybody thinks I'm talking about that in any way, shape, or form, I am not. I refute that completely. Okay, there are not two levels of believers. Everybody's going to receive praise of God when they get to heaven. Everybody's going to receive reward now. There's a level of reward, certainly, based on what was done in your body. That's what we're looking at here, right? But again, it's, it's maybe somebody, they get converted seconds before they die. And they really do. I mean, it's God's the judge, not me, right? The only praise you're going to get is, yeah, you believe the gospel. Whereas hopefully somebody that's been saved for 50 years has a little more, right? Okay. But it, I, I don't want anybody to give anybody the impression that I am subscribing to that in any way, shape, or form. Okay. It's funny, as a. I haven't thought about it in a while on some of the words I'm... I used to use a different word. I used to talk about when I built that little house of... I used to use the word uh, curriculum, that God put a curriculum in, in, in the Bible and we're supposed to follow it. Well, they hijacked that word. So if anybody knows about this and they hear you word curriculum, they go, ooh. So. That's funny. Paul Lucas talks about there being a curriculum from uh, specifically in the body of Christ from Romans 2, Philemon. There is. Yeah, absolutely. It goes from baby to mature. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it makes so much the, more sense. It, absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's, it's what it is. It's an example of perfect grace. Yeah. yeah. And that's what makes me upset is that that word got hijacked. Yeah. Because we all, again, it, it's a word that we all know, right? Yeah. You go to college, what do you take? You take a curriculum. Yeah. Right? You go to trade school, you take a curriculum. Yeah. I mean, even at this point, you make a new hire at the furniture store, don't you have some sort of a curriculum, even if it's just you giving them, telling them what to do? And it gets more and more advanced. It, yeah, yeah. Even if it's not written, that's the word that we use. It got hijacked, so they win. But anyhow, and there, there very definitely is, and that's why that little house of that edifice it built. That's why it's, it's an edification. We just saw the thing: instruction and righteousness. Mm -hmm. You start with Romans doctrine. Mm -hmm. Ephesians. Mean I. Natalie had a friend one time, and she she wanted to debate Dave. So okay, she came over to a Bible study. She graciously she listened to an hour of Bible study, and then we talked about the chart for like an hour. And finally, I'm, I, I got up and I just closed the chart. And Jamie, she's like, she's having fun. I can tell. And she goes, are we done? I go, no, you're not even saved. This chart is, I'm, I, I'm wasting my time, I'm wasting your time, because this chart's got nothing for you. Yeah. Because you're not even saved. Yeah. Right? right? So, it, it, and, and that's why you, when you talk to people, you want to be careful when you're talking to them. If you're talking to them about stuff that they're not ready to handle, big deal. It's, it's just, it, all you're doing is, show, I mean, maybe this is not your intent, but all you're doing at that point is showing off. And that's what I was doing with yeah. the chart. And I, that was my, not my intent. But that's but, that whole meat, uh, milk to meat concept. Exactly. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. like, I get those thoughts and I don't want to seem like, oh yeah, you're not ready for this. But like a lot of the people that I'm surrounded by, like, or, or not surrounded by, but people that say they believe, I feel like 
even a clap, if you, a Bible study like this, just I know. For sure. Way over I there. Absolutely. I don't want to seem like that's not like the reason why I'm not invited in because I have invited people. But it's, it's like, it's just like, I don't think, like, it's, it's not this dimly lit, you know, music everywhere and like, you know, like it's—they just want to feel the spirit. Yeah, exactly. And that, that's that's what that's what religion that's what religion is is today, right? Um, but you know, the, when when you have, I mean, invite them. I continue to invite yeah, them. Yeah. A lot of times too. I mean, there's a lady at the other thing. If, if she's if she's thinking about maybe inviting some people, and she's going to give me a heads up because some of the stuff we talk about. I mean, I don't know that if there was somebody was new that I would continue with the, the giant study on a Tuesday, right? I, I say, well, you want, there is some sensitivity, right? We see that a lot, of, and I've had to learn how to be on the fly real quick down at the truck stop because we never know how. But but I, will, I would make the argument, if you could get most people to understand the King James Bible, Paul's their apostle today, that would be a great start. First of all, so first of all, you ask them how they get saved. You know, I, the, the question I asked my daughter, which was so good. Jocelyn, if, if, if you don't make it through this, where are you going to go? I'm going to go to heaven, Dad. Why? Because Jesus died for my sins, was buried, and rose again. Well, what else? What do you mean, Dad? That's the that's that's response one, right? Right. Okay. Okay. So now that's where you want to start. You got to you got to know that. You got to know that, because then the King James Bible and Paul doesn't even matter. Yeah. Right. Better off to have somebody be totally ignorant of everything that we talk about, but truly saved, yeah. than be able to draw the chart and draw whatever and talk about all these things, but not have put their faith in the shed blood of Jesus Christ and go to hell. And we get, I don't mean we in this room, but sometimes we get caught up in forgetting that because we just assume, I mean, that's why you notice when we go to conference, we always, even though we're, and we know who we're talking to in that room, we always talk about you got to be saved. You yeah. got to be saved because it doesn't matter if you're not. Right. I can understand yeah. people that doesn't, you know, be seeing other people that are Christians or saved, and we start talking to them a bit and start scratching at the surface and asking why you know they think they are saved. It's like, well, yeah, it's it's not it's not a right division thing anymore. Teaching them that it's it's a it's time to present the gospel right. to them to yeah. make sure that they know that. And then I have with people, and they're like, oh, yeah, I know, Jesus died for his sins, buried, rose again, third day. You know, but, but most, most people, if they are saved, they're not going to re- recoil in war and hear the gospel or be offended that you think they're not saved. They're going to hear it, and they're going to be like, they're going to go, Amen. hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can hear it that every day. It's the people who that aren't, who like, 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 wriggle like a worm on a hook. Right. They yes. are uncomfortable with it. Because right. I'm not ashamed so, of the gospel of Christ. Right. Back to that. Yeah, if so you're I, saved, you're not ashamed of that. Yeah, it's the yeah. power of salvation. Sure I have God no qualms about it. even people who don't get right division. Uh, you know that you know they don't have the spiritual eyes to see it because they're not saved. But but you know there's teaching involved. But I right. I do not hesitate to, nope. to present the gospel. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. The the number one thing I tell people: Well, how do I how do I share this information? <laughs> First thing you gotta do is just listen. Find out where they're at. Like you said, is, if there's somebody using an NIV or an American Standard, you can't even show them how to rightly divide out of their yeah, yeah. You, the, the phrase. The, the phrase isn't there, right? But you know, and, and so, well, can you get saved out of those? Well, I got saved out of it, out of the American Standard. Richard Jordan says he got saved, and then he's not the standard, but he got. And I always tell people too, man, you better be figure out if you don't know how, you better be able to figure out how to do it out of their Bible. Now it's a little different today because we have the phones and we have a we can have a King James Bible, yeah. but but you need to know when, when, when you know this thing about well John three sixteen isn't for us. I get that. I, I, I can make the argument forwards and backwards, up and down. I, I can do the argument. But if somebody in the truck stop and the back that the other day, I said, why are you are you even? I asked him. I said, how, how do you know that you're saved? Well, I believe John three sixteen. I didn't sit there and say, well, you know, that's not for us today. I said, well, what did you believe about John three sixteen? And it took me about eight questions, but I finally got him to say, well, I believe Jesus died for my sins with burial. Okay, okay. Is he the guy I'm going to have a big, deep conversation about whether or not John 3.16 is for us today? No. But I know if I ever see him again, if he says, yeah, because of John 3.16, I know what that means to him. And I can go from there. Now, in this room, I would, you know, you had the, you and I had that conversation this week. Would I use that verse? No, I'm, but I'd use this verse. And it's funny how, like, that just came into our room yeah. yeah like, Don't use John three sixteen. Use Romans five nine. Well, and they have to want to learn and grow. The they tribe. have to have that right. desire. Otherwise, yeah. up in the wall. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I've got. Yeah. 
Okay. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Sometimes they watch, so I'm just. <laughs> That's it. That's exactly. That's exactly it. So, okay. Uh, oh yeah. The, so let's. What time is it? We got time. Okay. So let's look at the judgment seat of Christ. Yes. And I don't know why I don't have any notes about this written down. So we'll just we'll just figure it out. Look over First Thessalonians four. Oh, I see what I was going to do. First Thessalonians four verse thirteen. You know, a lot of times you teach things in a this, and I, I I'm trying to think. Well, that's, that's kind of backwards. I don't know. I think I was going to do it backwards this time. But First Thessalonians four verse thirteen. He says, "But I would not have you ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep." that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. So when he says there, I would not have you to be ignorant, this is something he wants you to know. Yeah. Here's some doctrine. Here's some doctrine that's going to help. If you jump down to the last verse, wherefore comfort one another with these words. This is a doctrine that should make a difference in the life, in, in your life. Um, I'm not going to get into teaching what was going on in the Thessalonians so much there. Is that, is that this was what was going on in Thessalonians. Somebody was going into the Thessalonians and tell them that the, the rapture had happened, that the resurrection had already happened. They weren't denying it. Just put it in the wrong spot on the chart, if you will. Okay. Um, and they, the, the concern was, well, now, wait a second. If my, if my loved ones are, have, have died and the resurrection is passed, what does that mean for them? And, then, and also, then what does that mean for me? Right. Right. Okay. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and that's the, the if of logic, right? Okay. If we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so also them which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. If Jesus was resurrected, our loved ones will be too. Okay. Even so them, now you got to pay attention to this verse though. Even so them also which are sleep in, sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. This is not a verse, this particular verse is not saying that Jesus is coming back to get them. This is saying Jesus is bringing them. He's bringing them to God with him. Right. You see how that resurrection is going to happen. Jesus is going to come back and get them. But this verse is saying, look it, Jesus is going to bring, will God bring with him? Okay, not bring with him back to the earth. They're already on the earth. They're buried right. here near. He's going to bring with them back yeah. to God. Okay. You see that verse? Look, up, look back at chapter 3, verse 13. To the end, he may establish your hearts unblameable in holiness before God, even our Father, at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. He's not coming to the earth with his saints. People want this to be the angels. With the, you can read that the context he's talking about it in any way, shape, or form. This is when he's, he's come back and he's taken them to the Father. This is where, as we go up to the judgment seat of Christ, okay? Chapter three, verse thirteen. The last after the last comma. Okay, verse fifteen. I'm back in chapter four. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord. So this is part of Paul's unique revelation. He got this directly from the Lord. This we say unto you by the way of the Lord, by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. Now, I want to, you see that Paul calls this the coming of the Lord. And Paul anticipated that he was going to be at the, he was going to make it. That will help you realize, too, some of the, some of the things that Peter says, because Peter thought he was going to make it to this, his, the prophesied second coming. Yeah. So he also thought he was going to make it through this event. Now, he wasn't going to go with Paul, but anyhow. Anyhow. Okay. So, and, and the word prevent there, that we which are alive and remain in the coming of the Lord shall not prevent, the, the, the sense there is, is proceed. Okay? With those of us that are alive are not going to go before those that are dead. Okay, verse 16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air, so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. I think every time that Paul talks about this event that we call the rapture, that we call the rapture. 
he uses it as a way of comfort. It is designed to comfort. Now, it's not escapism, let's be clear. You know, you guys just believe in a, in a secret rapture. You just want to escape everything. It's not escapism. It's true godly comfort. The scripture is designed to give us comfort. When I was in that men's Bible study, we talked about Revelation. The men, I mean, the men believed they were going to go through the tribulation, and they were rightly scared. I mean, they, they, there was consistency there, right? They, they weren't thinking they were going to go through the tribulation, and they weren't scared of that. They were, in fact, scared of that. This is designed to tell us you're not going through that, so just be comforted, you know? Uh, Hannity, who uses the verse wrong, let not your heart be troubled, right? I mean, when Hannity uses it, he yeah. does great violence to that verse. So um, I'm just trying to do this. In this okay, so these verses right here, can you guys see that over there? Yeah, there's nobody sitting over here. So. This will work. Okay, all right, so we'll just go through this real quick and we'll, we'll, we'll draw it out. Uh, verse 16 The Lord Himself shall descend from heaven. So, the Lord, of course, is at the right hand of God, He's going to descend back from heaven, He's going to come down. Okay. He's going to descend with a shout. This is going to be the shout. I'm going to get all these things down. I can't remember them. Shout, the voice of the archangel. That's kind of an interesting one. And with the trump of God. Okay, important to understand there that this is God's trump. The seven trumpets in Revelation belong to the angels. Okay, just because everybody wants this to be this is, this is how they can fly. My, my, my goal here is not to teach the rapture, so I, I, I need to be careful I don't get myself sidetracked here. Okay, uh, the voice of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. So he's coming back. Here's the earth. Got the dead in Christ. That's not a throne. That's the dead. That, that's, we'll, just, we'll just do one. There's a tombstone. It's been a little morbid. Okay, these people are going to rise first. Okay, they get to go first. Okay. Lord was sent from heaven, the voice of the shout, voice of the orange archangel, trump of God, the dead in Christ shall rise first, then we which are alive and remain, okay, shall be caught up. That's where we get the word rapture. You gotta go to the Latin, you gotta go to the Greek, then you gotta go to the Latin, and then you get the word rapturo. Okay. Shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. That's the important thing. Jesus Christ is not coming to the planet on this one. That's a cloud. Believe it or not, it doesn't look like a cloud, but it, it is. Okay, we're going to join them in the clouds, second heaven, if you will, and we'll be with the Lord. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Now, this is one of the verses too that people just want to be just be silly, and they want to say, well, how are how many billion people always going to be in the presence of the Lord? This doesn't necessarily mean in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ right. at every moment, right? Forget the right. politi the political thing. All, our governor, our mayor, rule, my mayor rules with my governor who rules with my president, right? But they're not all in the same spot, right? right? Okay, that, that's what we're talking about here. So the, the people, I just sometimes people just go, really? <laughs> okay, so that's that, that's the diagram of this verse. And again, my goal is not to teach the rapture, but just what the events that are going on here. Look over at First Corinthians fifteen. Verse 51. 15.51. It's interesting to me, too. We, we, we talk about, um, we talked about earlier the curriculum or the way that Paul's epistles are laid out. And they start in Romans, right, which is your, your basic doctrine. And they build the Thessalonians, which, you know, we kind of think about the rapture books, right? And, and, but it's interesting, Thessalonians were written early. First Corinthians were written relatively early compared to some of the other books. This is a discussion that he was having with people at the beginning. They gave them their hope in a heaven. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's just interesting. The yeah, way it's yeah. laid out is, is, is different. Yeah. But he's talking about this at the very beginning of his ministry. So it's always been part of the deal. Yeah. Okay. 1 Corinthians 15, 51. Behold, I show you what? Mystery. Now, this is not the mystery. This is one of the mysteries that make up the body of work that we would call the mystery, okay? Now, if Paul's going to show you a mystery, 
Was this information known beforehand? Mm -hmm. Nope. No one. Did Peter talk about it? Nope. How about the Lord Jesus Christ and his ministry? How about Matthew 24? Everybody knows that's right. about the rapture, right? Right. <laughs> it's nope. not. And you want to be careful. You know, I think I, when, when it was on that thing, I, I, you know, I don't, I don't want to teach rapture. Okay. Behold, so this is, this, is, this is mystery information. This is information that nobody had until Paul, it was given to Paul and then Paul gave it to us. He says, we shall not all sleep, in the context there is death, physical death. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. There is a change coming for everybody. Not everybody's going to die. And you can tell, again, here's another one where he, the, the we here, he says, we shall not all sleep. So he's thinking he's not going to be one. He's thinking he's going to be changed, right? right? Okay. Now, in a moment, in the twinkling of the eye, of an eye, at the last trump. In the other passage, right, we see God, Jesus returning with God's trump. Okay. That's, that's the sound that the trumpet makes. Okay. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. Right here. The trumpet sounds, the first, that first trumpet sounds, and the dead in Christ go. Okay? The dead shall be raised incorruptible, that corruption will be gone, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So then this corruption shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality. Then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? The death has no victory on us. I mean, we're going out to this funeral today, it's probably for an unsaved person. If that was, you know, say the funerals I, that, that we talked about earlier where they were saved people, the grave's got no victory over them. We're, we're sad, and we should be sad, but those people don't want to come back. You know, my, my uncle, my aunts and uncles, I know the pain they were in. You know, they're up in heaven and, and, and they're removed from that pain. And, okay. So for, go back to verse 52. Verse 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, that we shall all be changed. When are we going to be changed? In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. So we see it. The first trump's going. So we go up in the, at the last trump. Right. So, near as I can tell, there's going to be two trump sounds. The first trump, whoo, the dead in Christ are going to go yeah. first. Whoo, we're going to go up, and we're going to get changed. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then we're going to meet in the clouds. We're thinking about meet in the clouds and forever be with the Lord. Okay? Paul called this, this event right here, the coming of the Lord. Okay. The coming of the Lord. So turn back to 1 Corinthians 4. It's crazy to think about that. It's like, how is that going to look like? How is that going to feel? Like, right. Yeah. It is. Like, I can't even, I, I can't it's begin to imagine, like, mm -hmm. yeah. we're going to get changed. And first of all, we're going to get caught up in the sky. Right? I know. Oh, we're not afraid of heights. You know? I've always thought of that. Because I am afraid of heights. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's definitely crossed my mind. <laughs> I love this. Because you, you hear people talk about some of these things. You know, you, you, you know who's going to be the best. All these kids, right, are playing the video games because they're going to be good with the joystick. I mean, these bodies move fast, too. Richard always says, well, if I'm not with, with Cynthia, it's be Cynthia. Cynthia. <laughs> it did say you'll be, t be together, right? You will be with your loved ones. It, it, it gives you the appearance of. Um, but yeah, it, it, it is very, very, very interesting. How does, how does that happen? And then at a very selfish level, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm ready for it to happen. You know, I got to go to physical therapy starting next next Wednesday, next Friday. I'm thinking, man, the rapture should be the best physical yeah. therapy because I can avoid it. But you know, <laughs> you, you know. But when that when, when when my daughter when my daughter my daughter was pregnant, I really wanted the rapture to wait until she had her baby, right? Not really, but really. Yeah. yeah. You know. Well, now I want now now I want to wait till Johnson has it. it, it not really. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. Just, yeah. Talk about thinking about something temporal. Okay, First Corinthians four. It would just jump into verse verse five. Um, well, let's, yeah, verse one. Let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. So again, you can see 
He's continuing on with this issue talking about the ministry. Okay? He, he, Paul has been given, he's a steward of the mystery of God. You know who else is a steward of the mystery of God, by the way? We are. We are. Moreover, it is in, required in stewards that a man be found faithful. But with me, it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you, or of man's judgment. Yea, I judge not my own self. For I know nothing by myself, yet am I not thereby justified, yet am I not thereby hereby justified, but he that judges me is the Lord. Therefore, judge nothing before the time until the Lord come. You see that phrase? The coming of the Lord? This is he's talking about until the Lord come. Okay? So the event we're talking about is until the Lord come is the coming of the Lord. Okay, and at that moment, at that time, who will bring to light the hidden things of darkness. Okay, we can all agree that's those are bad, right? Okay. And we'll make manifest the counsels of the hearts. Can't we also kind of pretty much agree those are going to be bad things too? Mm -hmm. For the most part, right? The hearts, to, what is it, deceptively wicked and... Yeah. yeah, okay. There's the knee. There's your bending on your knee, confessing to God. Okay. He's going to bring the light, the hidden things of darkness, all that stuff that we've buried, he's going to bring it to light. Okay. He's going to make manifest the counsels of the hearts. Okay, and, and, and at that point you think, well, maybe all those people that are thinking it's going to be a day of condemnation and day of shame are right. Hey, there are things I don't want people to know. There's things I don't want April to know, let alone the rest of y'all. <laughs> right? And they're all going to, he's going to make them that. There, there they are. But look at the next phrase. And then shall every man have praise of God. Doesn't say condemnation. Doesn't say ashamed, doesn't say tisk tisk. doesn't say God's going to point his finger at you. All that stuff's going to become the light. All that stuff's going to be made manifest, and then you're going to receive praise of God. Now, you're certainly not going to receive praise for all the bad and evil stuff you've done, right? Rick, so we know what we're talking about. Now we're back to the hidden, the, the things done in your body, whether they be good or bad. Okay? Now, why is it that the verse says, and then shall every man have praise of God? Everything else is burned up. Everything else Don't forget, this verse is after 1 Corinthians 3, in the way he wrote it. All the bad stuff got burned up in 1 Corinthians 3. Okay? So, that would be my understanding. This right here is where the judgment seat of Christ is going to happen. Okay? We're going to gather it up together here. We're going to go to the judgment seat of Christ, we're going to confess to God all that stuff's going to be made tonight and then made known brought to light and we're going to receive praise of God we're going to receive, this, is, this is the moment where we receive the reward, the reward. Okay. Mm -hmm. then, remember the thing we read back in 1 Thessalonians 3 he's going to return with his saints where? to God he's going to take the church and he's going to present the church well, who? to God as the, the, the glorious thing that's been washed with water, right? That he's made. And what's God's response to Christ going to be? Well done, my son. Right? Because all that's left is the good. Now, it's all the stuff that's done in the Lord. I don't know if I don't have this verse written down here. Look at 1 Corinthians 15. Oh, we didn't read far enough. That's why. 1 Corinthians 15 again. Chapter 15? Yeah, 1 Corinthians 15. So, in verse 54. So then this corruptible shall I put on incorruption, right? You're gonna, that's your new body. Okay? And this mortal should I put on immortality. You're subject to death, and now you're no longer. Then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin. Right? The, the, the problem with death is that everybody understands there's a sin issue and there's a judgment issue. That's the problem. Okay? And the strength of sin is what? They just condemned you. Thanks be to God that give us the victory, what? The victory over death through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain, where? 
in the Lord. Because that sonship edification, or forget the sonship edification, even the people that will say, well, you're going you're gonna to get up there and be ashamed, will we'll, we'll present it th this way. And this is kind of my, my um, paraphrasing of what they would say, is that you're going to do ten good things, ten things in the Lord. You're going to do four bad things, four things not in the Lord. So you're going to net out at six. But that would mean that the four of the things you did in the Lord were in vain, wouldn't it? Because, no. okay, that's not how it works. You do, and it, this is not how it works at all, but anyhow, you do ten good things, you do four bad things, the four bad things, what? Burn, Burn up. Right. You receive praise of the ten things done in the Lord because yeah. they're not in vain. Yeah. That makes sense? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I, I just want to, you know, that's, that's why we can receive praise of God because it's based on what was done in the Lord. It was done, it was, it was done, Based on what was Galatians two twenty, Christ in me, not me in me. Okay. What time are we at? Okay. So go back to First Corinthians fifteen three. First Corinthians three. First Corinthians three. Verse 12. So we looked last time at 11. No other foundation can any man can no man lay than is laid, which is Jesus Christ. We looked at that. So now with this in mind, what happens at the judgment seat of Christ? This is where you find out what happens. If any man built upon this foundation, that's the Lord Jesus Christ, gold, silver, precious stones. We looked at that last time. That's that wisdom, that silver, and that understanding that we saw is necessary in Colossians to live a life pleasing unto God. Right? You, you, you got to have that godly wisdom. You can't do that in your own flesh. Okay. Wood, hay, stubble. Every man's work shall be made manifest. For the day, what day? This day. What I would call the day of Christ. For the day, the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire. The fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. Now the word, the word, the work is gold, silver, precious stones, or wood, hay, stubble. Okay. Hopefully, it's very clear that it's the wood, hay, and stubble that's going to get burned up. And it's the gold, silver, and precious stones that are going to get refined. Okay. If any man's work abide, which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. Don't be scared of the word reward. And don't go, don't go out and, and, and seek it like you're trying to seek a, a you know, the way the way the way the Gentiles do. Right. But understand, there is a reward. There is there is a reward for the doctrine getting built up in you. And working out here, it's very clear, and it's going to be based on what survived the fire. Okay. Verse fifteen: If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. So this is where they say, this is the way they say, see, if it's burned up, it's going to be, you're going to suffer a loss, but it's not a loss of the good; it's a loss of the opportunity for reward because that stuff you did. Yeah, there's no reward there, right? Because again, we we always want to we always tend to think that the wood, hay, and stubble is 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 bad, is evil. What we would call human human evil, but it might be human good. I, I you know I I pick I'm I'm, you know, I'm 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 probably starting to be a bully. I pick on this poor lady all the time. I just read another article about uh, Mother Teresa. Did, would anybody deny that she did human good? She did. Uh, Based on the church she belonged to, there's a good chance she's in hell. And all the, she, if she didn't, if she didn't share the gospel, death, burial, and resurrection, of Lord Jesus Christ, all she did was do that for a season. That's whoa, burn up. If she even made it to the judgment seat of Christ, and I don't know that. Again, it's, I'm not the judge of that. Okay, but if she had, if she did make it to the, if she will make it to the judgment seat of Christ, and better put it that way, all that stuff, whoa, it just burn up. Right. The issue is what was done in the Lord right now can you do human good in the Lord yes can you provide shelter or be at the homeless shelter or whatever it is whatever human good looks like can you do that and still be in the Lord absolutely and there's a thinking out there well if I if I feel good about it that means I did it in my own flesh but that's not true either right right I, I just can't imagine how you would do something in the Lord and then feel bad for it I don't quite know how that would work when I know what the fruit of the Spirit is, right? I would think, 
wow, that would be a very joyous moment and that God would want to encourage you in, in such an endeavor, if you will. So again, this is not where you, okay, you get you had five element, five issues of reward and you did that bad thing, so now you have three. Okay, it, it's, it's not, it's, it's a lot. That was an opportunity for reward and you lost that opportunity. Okay? Seeking fleshly things. Or just even doing it in your own effort. I know, right. You know? Um, the one I always talk about, because, you know, I, I spend a lot of time with, with Glenn, and he's, he's definitely an old-timer. You know, a lot of the old-timers, when they would get people saved, they would they had carried a book, and they'd, they'd write down their name, right? Mm-hmm. And not so that they could get to heaven and say, God, look how beautiful my book is. Most of them, so they could remember who to pray for. Yes. You know, I think about a guy like Glenn, who, who knows how many people Glenn's gotten saved at that truck stop, right? And I don't know that he, I don't know that he has a book. I don't think Glenn does, but we talk about that. But, but okay, so now, well, if you're, if, if you're doing it to get a notch in your belt, I would submit, and God's the judge, but I would submit that's something done in your own flesh. Now, did the person get saved? Well, they still got saved. That's a good thing, yeah. right? But if you're doing it and you're keeping the names of it in that prayer book so that they can, so you can remember to pray for them, which I would say is a good endeavor, right. and it's just between you and you, I would say that was something that was done in the Lord. I'm not the judge. But you, you, you get where, where the issue can be human good. Mm-hmm. So don't get, don't get wrapped up in that this is just the evil stuff. Right. Okay? Uh, if any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer law. Uh, verse 14. If any man's work abide, which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. That's a loss of opportunity for reward. But he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. That fire is that, ref- that, that, that refining. You're saved because it's based on what was done in, in the Lord. So when you get to, uh, into heaven, if I can put it in human terms, you're not dragging around all this fleshly stuff with you, right? It's, it's, you have been refined. By burning up all that, yeah. all that stuff that you hung on to, uh-huh. right? I know you guys have seen me do, you know, and I, and I, I do that pizza kitchen, the pizza oven, right? And I don't. Have you guys seen the pizza no, oven? They have. Conveyor belt. My little conveyor belt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So this is a diagram. This is this is this is not the way it is. Okay. Now I did meant to say this one time. I said, okay, this is not the way it is. And I say, okay, no, it's just like this in heaven. No, it's not. Okay. But this is just a visual. This is just a visualization. Okay. So, there's a conveyor belt. In the middle of the conveyor belt is what I call a pizza oven, right? You got that flame that's going, it's, it's, it's good. And it's our turn at the judgment seat of Christ. And so we put all the stuff that we, you know, we put all the, all the stuff that we've done, and we all got that stuff that we're really proud of. Did this, and I did this. Yeah, you know, boy, is he going to be happy with me? Mm-hmm. And Jesus is over there, and he flips the lever, and then the conveyor belt starts to go. And all our stuff goes through the fire, and we come out. We're so excited. We know that one, right? I mean, that one's that one's that's cats me out right there. And we get all done, and we get a reward, and that's it. <laughs> because we get all caught up in this. Yeah. yeah maybe you get you know, right? But whatever it is. <laughs> but this is this is not how it is, okay? But this is how I visualize it. Yeah. We we're we're so proud of all this stuff. It gets purged by fire. The fire, by the way, is the word of God. It gets purged by fire, and then our reward is based on what was done in the Lord, because nothing in the Lord is in vain. Right. Because the issue is not us, it's Christ. Right? He says, I I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. What's he saying? That's functional life. That's life here on planet Earth. I'm able to, to, to live a life pleasing unto God and be used for God because I'm not doing it in my efforts of my own flesh. I'm doing it by Christ in me. Okay. That's why we can receive praise of God at this moment. Because it's not, not based on us. It's based on His Son. And, and, and we, need, we, need, we need to remember that. The issue is always His Son. Right. We always want to make the issue us. I get that. I'm, I'm the same way. But the issue is who we are in Christ. Okay? Come, on, so look, come with me. To uh, what is it? First Tim, Second Timothy again. Second Timothy two. This way it's so important to to be a student of God's word, to understand that God didn't put every description of everything in one spot. We've looked at three, or probably four or five different uh, scriptures in different places that have talked about 
the, what I would call the day of Christ, the the rap, or we'll commonly called called the rapture. Okay, and, and they build on each other. So look at Second Timothy two. We talked about Thessalonians was an early book. Second, Second Th Timothy two was the last book written. Verse ten. Second Thess. Second Timothy, two. Verse ten. Therefore I endure all things for the elect's sake, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with the eternal glory. It is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, and are we? Yeah. Yes. We shall also live with him. If we suffer, do you suffer? Okay, the, the verse does not say if we suffer with him. There are other places that do, but this verse does not say that. This verse says, if we suffer, we shall also reign with him. Okay? Because it, do you suffer with Christ? If you're saved, do you suffer with Christ? Yeah, because you're no longer part of this world. Yeah. We're, we're... But I mean, Christ is in you, right? Yeah. So if you suffer, and is, is, isn't one of the the benefits, I mean, for lack of a better word, of, of being saved is that when you suffer, you do suffer with Christ. You have this incredible energy, uh, resource inside of you to get through that suffering. You know, can I, can I tell you? We can, uh, what is it, glory and tribulation? Or yeah, that? yeah. Glory and tribulation. Glory, glory and tribulation, understanding, because patience, we, we understand, we understand it. So, yeah, I mean, if we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. Now, we just looked at, the deny here is not deny so we go to hell, and we know that because of the next verse. So what is the deny? The deny here is, is the reward. Okay, see, the context is our, the reward we looked at, I think, a couple of weeks ago, is that we're going to rule and reign with him in the heavenly places. The, the reward is going to be a principality, a power, a might, a dominion, or any other name that is named. That's, that's the reward based on our, our, on our, on our doctrine. Okay? He's, we're going to be denied. What? Not, now, when you and I, I heard somebody say the other day, and I was surprised that the, the, this person said it. What is, he said, we're going to be denied the opportunity to rule and reign with Christ. We're all going to rule and reign, but you're going to be denied a, an opportunity of reward. Okay, we will still get some reward. We saw the verse. We all receive praise of God. Okay, but if we deny Him, there's going to be a, a deny again. That's the opportunity for loss, right? Verse thirteen: If we believe not, yet He abideth faithful; He cannot deny Himself. So clearly, verse verse thirteen, verse twelve is not about losing your salvation. It can't be, even in the context. You can you don't even you don't you have to go anywhere to figure that out. Just read the next verse. Okay. If we suffer, shall we also reign with him? If we deny, verse twelve. If we deny him, he also will deny us. Deny us what? Deny us the opportunity for reward. That's the wood, hay, and stubble that gets burnt up. Okay. People want to do all kinds of weird things with these with this passage here. The the most common one, of course, they want to use this to prove that you can lose your salvation. Okay, it has nothing to do with, with with those issues. Okay, there's the issues at the judgment seat of Christ. It's a day of praise. It's for saved people only. Okay, the unsaved they, they get they they get their own throne, but it's the great white throne and it's Babylon. Okay. We don't need to be scared of the judgment seat of Christ. In fact, we should look forward to the judgment seat of Christ. Okay? Now, the people that have died have not been there yet. We'll all be there at the same time. How that works out, I don't know. But I'm sure God's got a plan. Right? I don't like lying, so I hope I'm early. <laughs> but um, it, it, is, it, it, is a, it is a teaching and it is a doctrine that is designed to bring comfort. We're not going through the tribulation. That's not the point of today's message. But when we get to the judgment seat of Christ, it is not an issue of shame, condemnation, failure. You might not get the praise that you thought you were going to get. But it is a day of praise of God. And maybe the only thing is you believe the gospel. Because maybe that's all you had time to do. Because of your own... You're rejecting the gospel, you know. 
Okay, so we will move on from this next time. I think i got a couple things to, to, to clean up on it, probably. Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you for your love. We do thank you for your grace, the time to come together. We do thank you for the, the, the rapture and the judgment seat of Christ. It is a day of praise. It is not a day that we should be fearful of, but that should, we should be excited about. A day where, where we, the, we begin to see and understand the reconciliation, the gathering of all things in your Son, your your plan coming to fruition, the 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 end game of your plan called glory, if if you will, to put it in human terms. Would you think that this is designed, as we walk here in time, to be a comfort to us, not just escapism, but true comfort, because these are the facts of what is going to happen. Uh, my prayer for all of us, too, is that we would get busy getting our loved ones saved so that they can experience this and not have a date at the judgment seat of Christ. Again, we thank you this is not dependent on us, but on Christ in us, on walking after the Holy Spirit. We thank you for your love and for your grace. In your son's name, amen.